We're sort of giving you the story of IG and how we save the account and how smart we are. And then we have one business, which is Snap and promotional products, and another little business called Out of Rewards that does incentives, online incentives, points-based programs, and how we're going to do both and build them up to be great. And it was actually one of our board members who was like, okay, I get the whole Snap business, I understand the incentive business. Um, you know that Snap business, the promotions? Um, yeah, that sucks. Um, it's not scalable. It's commoditized. The barriers to entry are really low. The switching costs are so high. You'll never get a decent, you'll never build a great company from it. On the other side, on the incentives, you can grow that business. You provide a true value add. You can scale it, right? And the barriers to entry are high. You get a great valuation for it one day when you build a great company. So I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh, who invited you? <laughs> this is so painful. Because you knew he was right. He's like, if you have $1 in one hour, spend it on the opportunity that has more effort and more, more upside. And so at that moment, as hard as it was to like comprehend, and it wasn't really making me happy at that moment in time, I knew it was the right thing to do. So we started the process of getting out of the promotions business and focusing on the incentive business. And so the Snap's resources got put into other rewards. And we dressed up Snap, the company that effectively started out of my dorm room at Laurier still had, and two years later sold the company for just over a million dollars, which was great. We were out of the business, had a bunch of money, plugged it into our new business, and we were like loving it. Times were good, things were great. Um, except the couple of years that we were running two businesses really took a toll on employee morale. Okay? And that, at that point in time, I really wish that I paid more attention to my OB class, because I didn't. But employee morale was low. Um, People didn't want to be there. You know, it was a long, grueling thing running two businesses. You know, I, um, I got into a program called Birthing of Giants that's at MIT in the U.S. It takes little entrepreneurs and makes them big entrepreneurs. And one of the speakers was a guy by the name of George Nader. And I remember him telling me in a session just similar to this. And he's built huge companies, went public on the NASDAQ four times. He built Boston markets in the U.S. And uh, I'll never forget the things he told me. I'll tell you one second. Um, he said, on my journey, he's 76 years old, you know, he's a billionaire many times over, built huge businesses, and he said, you know, in my entire life, he's a serial entrepreneur. He's like, I've never been able to figure out how to love two women at the same time. I've never been able to figure out how to run two businesses at the same time, and I've never figured out how to sit on two toilets at the same time. It's like, pick one, stick with it, and put all of your blood, sweat, and tears, and your passion into making all of those, those one, that one thing great. And for me, I realized the toll that it had taken on our company of running both of those businesses for so long was, was deep. It was a hard thing because, you know, people are everything, which is where my presentation is going. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, people are everything. Um, which again, I'm going to go back to OB class. I sat, you know, 12 years ago, just like all of you, my second year, uh, in the Peters building. I actually sat right up on that desk, right there, uh, chair right there, and I really didn't pay attention to OB. It was like, whatever, it's not finance, it's not sexy like marketing, you know, OB doesn't matter, okay? But honestly, it took me 12 years to learn that the most important thing that you will learn at Laurier is going to happen in this room. I know that's a little scary, but it's true. It took me 12 years. Hopefully it takes you a little bit quicker than it took me. In that journey, you know, I learned how important organizations and their people were to those organizations. Great companies are built by great people. Okay? One of the books that we brought today, do you still have it? It's Jim Collins, Good to Great. I don't know if any of you have ever read it in a row. I'm going to grab your water, actually. Oh. <laughs> We're gonna, we'll leave this here. But, um, I don't know if any of you have ever read it, but Jim Collins, who's a scientist who taught at Stanford, wrote about the, the past 50 years. He looked at companies, and he looked at what the most important things that those great companies did over time to build these amazing organizations. And some people thought it was technology, and some people thought it was markets, and some people thought it was timing. But 14 out of 14 companies were built by companies that had great people, A players. 
And at the time at I Love Rewards, we didn't have that. We had A's, B's, C's. We had people that were not that motivated, not that interested, and the work environment and the morale sucked. This was one year ago. One year ago, I didn't want to come to work. Okay, it was that bad. We were putting in a lot of time, a lot of hours, we were spinning our wheels. It wasn't fun. And it was like, I don't like this. This is not my philosophy. I'm all about the fun and the good times. This sucks. I was going to literally leave my keys to my COO at the office and said, hey, good luck. I'm going to go work on a cruise ship. Let me know how it turns out. And leave. And it was that bad. Like, I'm not exaggerating. It was that bad. And um, you know, before I did that, I, um, I took a little bit of time. I'm like, OK, listen, what were they saying in OB class in second year? What were they saying? There had to be something there that I could pull back. But no, more seriously, I learned about what did other companies do to keep morale high and culture and all that other stuff that are the intangible things that don't get a lot of attention but are the most important thing a business can have. Our number one priority at I Love Rewards, and it started that day, was our number one thing is our ability for our long-term success to attract, retain, and inspire great people. That's it. Everything we ever do from that point onward is the ability to attract, attract, retain, and inspire great people. So when you make decisions based on a number one, that's very clear. Is this going to make our people great? You know, is training going to make them better? Is this office space going to make it more attractive for employees to work? Is doing these programs going to inspire our people? Is having a vision of what we want to do? All of those things that we started to do with the company at the time were all around our people. Let's find great people and let's take care of them and train them because that's what's going to build a great company. And it's just something that dawned on me at that point after just seeing of what it sucked before and what it could be. And at that point, we started to tip. We started to focus on that. So I'm going to tell you about some of the things that we did in that past year to get to sort of where we are today. Um, it's a proven fact that <clears throat> at, when a company has more than two employees, its number one challenge is communication. Most, communica most companies communicate very, very poorly. And we were the same. You know, there was the, the water cooler talk, there was gossip grapevine, and it was killing us. So what we did is we put a program in place called To The Point. Okay? It's a daily meeting every single day at 11.15 if you come to I Love Rewards. Everybody in the company comes into our boardroom and we huddle together and um, we talk about the most, there's parts to it, the most significant thing that happened to you personally, to our love rewards, or to the industry in the last 24 hours. Okay, little pulse. We talk about the must do's for us that day. Each department does a spotlight. We have vision committees that are helping us achieve our vision of being the most successful loyalty company in the world. That's what we want to strive for. And that's what we now sort of make decisions. Is this going to make us the most successful loyalty company in the world? And then we start doing those things. Um, that nine minute meeting eliminated half the emails, eliminated all the other nonsense meetings that companies have because every single day you've got a pulse of what's going on in the business that day. And it's greatly increased um, our communications. We believe in celebrating success. You know, everyone likes to have fun. Everyone likes to succeed. So every month, the first Friday of every month, we have the applause program. It's the Isle of Rewards, Rewards and Recognition Lunch, where we all sit together like a big family in our boardroom, and we all have a themed lunch. You know, we've had um, New York, New York. We've had, next month, it's the Olympics. Um, last month, it was Halloween. And people come, and they come dressed up, and it's an amazing event where we acknowledge each other's efforts and contributions. Everybody gets an applause certificate where they can recognize somebody else's contribution that made I Love Rewards a great place to work. It can be for whatever reason you want, and sometimes you don't have to say, but then rumors get started if you're giving you know, each other applause certificates. You know, we're, we're a little gossipy that way. Um, <laughs> We, um, we lacked focus. You know, most companies lack focus. So what we did is we did top fives, okay? So 80% of the things 